there is now a huge number of coming electric cars, e-revs, they're going to be using this new hybrid battery. It's a combination of sodium ion cells with lithium ion cells. Absolutely fascinating because it really does overcome the one downside to lithium batteries, which is their performance in extremely cold temperatures. You look, you're talking about minus 30 degrees Celsius. They really don't like it. Put sodium in the backpack and everything changes. Now this new EV with a hybrid sodium lithium ion phosphate battery and a 1000 volt architecture is actually pretty damn awesome. I haven't done a whole lot of videos about plug-in hybrids and e-revs, but things are really changing in this sector and it is gonna make a lot of the old vehicles obsolete, particularly um, some of the newer cars we're seeing today. The Zika 9X, which is coming to Australia, markets outside of China, that has about 400 kilometers of EV only range and 600 kilowatt fast charging, completely different to the plug-in hybrids of today that you're lucky to get 50 kilowatt charging. The new Leap motor though, their D19 has an 80 kilowatt hour battery. And that means it has a range of around 500 kilometers. Yeah, I mean, Leap Motor, they are considered to be extremely good value cars. Very, very good value for money company. This is not really, they don't position themselves as like a Mercedes Benz rival or anything like that. So, some of these cars we're going to see are going to have these kinds of ranges and will be within budget, not, not budget price, but within the, the price budget of a lot of consumers. That's why I keep warning people, if you want an e-rev or, or if you want a plug-in hybrid, maybe just give it a little more time because there's some great cars that are about to come. This is one of them. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. You can see it's got a Leap Motor. Today unveiled its flagship SUV, the D19. It's an extended range vehicle. So essentially it's an EV that they've kind of added an internal, a small internal combustion motor to that that motor does not power the wheels. It only recharges the battery if the battery needs to be recharged. Now, of course, you can drive it on EV power alone. And that's the whole point of these cars that 99% um, of situations, you're never going to need the actual engine, which might make you question yourself whether you need a plug-in hybrid or an e-rev in the first place, right? Anyhow, Xpeng as well, they have, I think, five new e-revs coming, five new models, and they're all going to have kind of these similar ranges as well, about 400 kilometers of range, about 350 kilowatt charging speed. But this, the D19, this is the biggest battery pack in a hybrid that we've ever seen. The 80 kilowatt hour battery gives it up to 500 kilometers of EV only range. To give you some context, the new six seat or three row Tesla Model Y has an 82 kilowatt hour battery. So it's basically the same size battery as what is in a Model Y, but this is actually a, a very big car, right? We don't know the price yet, but we've heard price will be around 40,000 US dollars for this car. And there, there is an electric version as well, which I personally would be getting. It has a 115 kilowatt hour battery delivering up to 720 kilometers of range, probably close to something like 600 kilometers of range in the real world. Now, when I say I'd be getting it, I don't mean I'm actually gonna buy one. What, what I mean to say is if I was gonna choose between the two, the e-rev version or the fully electric version, I just think an e-rev or any kind of hybrid is a compromised car and I think you actually need it. And I mean, I've driven thousands of kilometers. Apparently you can't do that in Australia with an EV. A lot of people still think you can. Uh, in fact, people are buying e EVs in, all kinds of Africa, they're buying them all or Nepal, 73% of all car sales in, in Nepal are electric. You, you don't actually need a hybrid or a petrol car. Anyhow, this is big. It's just over 5.2 meters long. So it's about as big as a Toyota Land Cruiser and it's nearly two meters wide. It's got a pretty big wheelbase as well. It's 3.1 meter wheelbase. Now guys, before I go on, I should mention Leap Motor is, I believe, the second fastest growing car company in the world this year, second only to Xpeng. Their sales have grown by about 150% this year. 
The E-Rev version has an 800 volt architecture and therefore it has very, very fast charging. It also uses a sodium battery. It also uses a very, very unique battery from CATL. It's a hybrid battery that uses lithium ion phosphate cells and ternary battery cells. So NMC battery cells combined with lithium ion phosphate into the same battery pack. And it has a lot of power as well. It's got 400 kilowatt or apparently just over 400 kilowatt, which means it can do zero to 100 in less than five seconds, which is pretty fast for a vehicle that's this big and this heavy. CNF Post says, the EV version is a 1000 volt architecture with a powertrain delivering 540 kilowatt of power. It'll do zero to 100 in less than four seconds. So the EV version is even more technologically advanced in some ways and less complicated than a hybrid, of course, as well. Guys, scrap that part about lithium ion phosphate and NMC, that is incorrect. I'll say it again. The Freevoy battery in this hybrid, in the plug-in hybrid, the Freevoy battery in this E-Rev, it is from CATL and it utilizes a very, very interesting architecture. It's got a combination of lithium ion phosphate cells and sodium ion cells in the same battery pack. And that gives us some key advantages one of those is very, very good performance in freezing cold temperatures. So it's kind of like giving you the best of both worlds. The sodium ion batteries provide you the ability to actually retain battery capacity when you're say minus 20 degrees Celsius and also to charge the car very, very quickly at those cold temperatures. They also last longer than lithium ion phosphate cells. But for some reason, Cadle have combined the two cell chemistries together and they say this battery is capable of charging at pretty fast charging speed, but I believe about 350 kilowatt charging speeds, you can add 280 kilometers of range on a 10 minute charge, said CATL. So this battery pack is one of the most common battery packs now being used in advanced hybrids. There's a fair few different models now that use it. Here's what they said. The Freevoy battery can still be discharged at minus 40 degrees Celsius, recharged at minus 30 degrees Celsius, and at minus 20 degrees Celsius, there is no difference in the driving experience to that in ambient temperatures. So even at minus 20 degrees Celsius, you're not gonna lose any battery life, which is, you know, there's no other batteries in the world that have that ability. CNAIR Post says that this year, brands including IM Motors, GAC Group's HipTech, Subbrand, Leordo, Avatar, Deepal, Nevo, and Nita have all chosen to use the Freevoy battery in their hybrids, in their plug-in hybrids. And interestingly, there is pretty much no use of, or well, common use anyway, of BLD's blade battery in these newer, more advanced hybrids. Now, most of the models are using the Freevoy battery in a size of around 60 kilowatt hours. So that's providing between 400 to 450 kilometers of CLTC range, depending on the car. So as you can see, these, these newer hybrids are gonna have far faster, we're talking, you know, up to 10 times faster charging speed than the existing hybrids that are on the market today in many countries around the world. And they're also got a lot more range. I mean, far more EV only range. So guys, what do you think about this new car? I mean, I personally, even though the hybrid sounds incredible, I would personally buy the, the EV version. I think 600 kilometers of range is more than enough, especially considering it'll have fast charging of probably around 600 kilowatts using that 1000 volt architecture, you should be able to charge that battery, particularly in China. You're probably in about 14, 13 or 14 minutes. It's gonna be very, very fast to charge. So I don't think um, that's that's a downgrade. I think it's actually a, a big positive, a big benefit. And I think it's really also really exciting to see these new cars coming to market, to see these uh, people having a choice if they want to. I mean, if you wanted to do some towing, this could be a, tow, a really good tow vehicle for you. You know, if you bought an E-Rev like this and you're, you're convinced you needed a hybrid or you're convinced you need internal combustion because you want to do lots of towing, then this actually could be a really good option. You might not be able to do most of your towing on battery power alone. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So 
If you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.